today we continue with our class uh, our woman's guide to practical halacha and we start with Sefer Chof Chaim and um, big topic yeah, is the same we started a few, a few classes ago the topic is Avak Loshan Hara Avak just to remind us it's like dust it's not Loshan Hara but uh, something it's implying <clears throat> and it says harmful, uh, today's topic harmful praise praise uh, which has absolutely no negative ne no negative connotation can at times fall under category of abak toshenkhara it is forbidden to publicize person hospitality and generosity if this will cause uh, insincere and undeserving to take advantage of the person causing him uh, the monetary loss or emotional discomfort so what does it mean so somebody you you are unemployed somebody help you with the rent and you say this guy uh, you, uh, this Itzchak you you do not understand I was an employee everybody knew nobody came and he knocked my door and said you know what uh, I'm going to pay you rent until you get the job and uh, it's a wow and every, every, like in your mind he he saved your life uh, your, your life of your family and stuff like that but for other people it's like Really? He did so? I, I asked him for $250 loan. He didn't give me what kind of person that he is and this and that. I'm going to go to him now and I'm going to tell him everything that I think about him. So as we see here, so you, you wanted praise, to, to praise somebody. And it was absolutely no no negative connotation, but uh, you stood this person up, right? Uh, because some low life would uh, take advantage of him. Maybe he did not want to, like, for you, uh, to pay three months uh, worth of rent, he knows you that you're an honest person. You're going to pay back. You're struggling. You this, you that. But uh, for the other bum, he didn't want to give uh, even two hundred fifty dollars. So we have to be very, very careful. And second one is hospitality. And I also had this thing. Uh, there are some people when we used to have like every Friday night, we have a lot of guests. Baruch Hashem. And uh, and I was avoiding like specific like I, I avoiding some people like mamash I didn't want them in the house right and uh, these are the, the, the these few guys like over the years they came how come you never invite us so you invite this person they they told them how good it was this and that so it was a very uncomfortable situation okay even though I told my guests don't please don't don't publicize that you're my house just keep it between us okay. So we stop here. <clears throat> Somebody left? Okay, no problem. Okay, so we continue. Let's see what is our topic. Uh, expecting a child. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> so it's a new big topic. Davening for unborn child. The Mishnah tells us that if man and woman uh, davens for an unborn child to be specifically boy or a girl, it is considered tefillah's uh, shav, a prayer in vain. The Gemara explains that um, this refers to the davening 40 days after conception, since the gender is already determined at that point. However, before that time, the tefillah can be effective, and a couple men uh, may entreat Hashem for their uh, preference. Okay. So 40 days under uh, after con conception, meaning what? Uh, it, there is already embryo. So if, if it's already uh, existed embryo, so uh, j just because you do not know what, what is that, uh, it's, it's already established fact. So you, we, we're not allowed uh, to, to daven about it. Like, uh, it's not like Hashem is going to take this uh, girl and put, give you boy or opposite. Take, take the boy and give you girl. Okay. So 40 days after conception, not allowed. So of course, before that, that it's proper. Uh, is is it proper to pray for a specific gender? Uh, I don't know. Whatever Hashem decides is is good for you. So in 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 some sense, it's like a sign of arrogance, right? So I know what is better for me. Okay, so you 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 know what is better for me, and Hashem does not. That's uh, like it, that's the way I see it. <coughs> Continue. However, before that time, tefillah can be affected and a couple may entreat uh, Hashem for their pre preference. Okay, continue. After that time, one should certainly daven uh, for her child to be born healthy and he or she 
should go in the ways of Hashem, following the Torah and mitzvahs. That's uh, the, okay. So after uh, after the, the forty days, just uh, the, down for a for a healthy child doesn't matter, it's boy and girl doesn't make any difference. But our Hashem gives it good. Continue, right? So the the, the main point uh, is uh, not not even health. I mean health is, is also important, but the main point is so the child would go in the ways of Hashem, following Torah and mitzvahs. So if he so or she is healthy and going opposite of. Uh, Hashem's way will look good. Sometimes I, I know those parents, they wish that these uh, children were never born to them, even though they're, they're healthy. You understand? So, okay, continue. Praying for one child's be on ch one child's behalf. One should not only pray for the ch uh, her children before they are born, she should const constantly pray for her children on behalf on the children's behalf, that they follow the ways of the Torah, be righteous, and have good character traits. So it's uh, all the time. So it's an ob obligation, especially on the mother, because there is special connection between uh, mother and, uh, and her child, and especially at the right, at the right time, it's uh, right after the lighting of Shabbos candles, or Yom Yom Tov candles. And uh, I think in... In most Sidurim, there is a special prayer. Of course, uh, you, you're not obligated to, to say the, these specific words, but uh, just f follow follow that um, um, <clears throat> that procedure, and you can embellish and you you can ask uh, some other things. But that's a proper proper time to to pray uh, for for children to be God fearing pe uh, people. Okay. And uh, of, of course, father also must uh, must, must pray. Right? Like, don't uh, don't don't count on uh, on uh, yeshiva education or baby uh, righteous babysitter. This or that tutor. No, no, you you have to pray that Hashem actually send this child uh, the right thoughts. <clears throat> there are times uh, that they especially uh, opportune for such a prayers, including during the daily morning birchas Torah. Okay, and specifically in the words. Um, <clears throat> May we, uh, may we in our offspring, etc. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's very interesting. So uh, when, when we say Birchas Torah, blessing to the Torah, right, uh, right, right uh, in the morning before all of the other blessings. So keep in mind. So it's actually for you and for your children. Very interesting because it be because of the words, right? May we in our offspring. Okay. Uh, a second time. Uh, is um, during the bracha of Ahava Rabba or Ahava Salam. So it, Ahava Rabba, it's in a, uh, it's it's a blessing, last blessing before Shema, uh, before Shema Saint Shema Israel. Ahava Rabba and Ahava Salam. So one in the morning and one at night. <clears throat> um, so in this blessing, at the words, what words? Uh, I cannot. It's it's, it's in English. Lo nechavosh, veloi nekalim lo elam vayet. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, the second time. So one once it's uh, in the morning during the brichas chatora. Second in um, um, in achavaraba in uh, the, the, the last blessing before Shema. And the third time during Uvalitzion, specifically at time. So Uvalitzion, it's uh, at the end uh, of the prayers. Words Lama Laman Loniga Larik Veloi Nelet Labechala. So we do not struggle in vain, not produce, uh, not, not nor produce for a futility. Okay. So I'm not sure what is it exactly, but, but we can check. Maybe let, later on, Brunetta, we can check in a cigar. Okay, so basically you have three times. So um, three times during the daily prayer to pray for your children. Okay. Um, next one, Zgulav at candle lighting. Exactly. It is says in the name of Arizal that is good for a woman to have children or to have success in ra uh, raising children is uh, is for her to recite the verse uh, verses from Shmuel Aleph and they say uh, paragraph 1 and verses 1 and 2 1 and uh, 2 10 okay 
After lighting the Shabbos candles on uh, Friday night. Okay. This verse is read uh, as a Haftarah, or the first day of Rosh Hashanah, uh, and includes um, Shira, Shira's Hana. So Shira's Hana is a, is a song of Hana, right, when she was uh, praying for Shmuel. Okay. Ideally, she should understand the meaning of the words, and she should uh, be sure to give charity before the lighting of the candle. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, uh, that's uh, one one of the times that uh, we should uh, give charity, like small, like any amount, small amount. Okay. When? Before the lighting of Shabbos candles, or Yom Tov candles. <clears throat> and uh, so you, you light the candles and then you pray. So that's the procedure. Candle lighting time for Friday is an opportune time for a woman to daven, uh, to, have, to have children, and to raise them in Torah path. This uh, is because Chazal teach that one who is careful with the midst of lighting candles when many children who are Talmidei Chachamim. So it's very important. So, uh, people ask for Zgula, um, he is Gula. Light, uh, light the Shabbat candles and preferably, as we said many times, they try to do it like a little early. Five minutes, ten minutes before the right time. So show that uh, the mitzvah is very dear to you, especially in the winter. So in summer there is no problem, but in the winter, that's especially. Okay, so continue. Revealing uh, uh, one's happy news. Right, the revealing. So, okay, so we try to, to keep this uh, news actually is uh, secret as long as possible. The decision of when a woman informs others that she is expecting a child is a sensitive issue. Sneers, modesty, and family dynamics should be taken into consideration. Hazal teach uh, that there are times when one may alter the truth. One such a situation is sneers, uh, sneers is modesty, right? Sneers may be, um, when sneers may be compromised. Hence, the woman is asked if she is expecting, in certain, in certain situations, she may deny it even if she is. Okay, so... Right, so um, especially it's, there are some people with with a uh, uh, sign, with a with a bad eye. I mean, ein ra, ein ra, ein ra. So I mean, uh, so of course, so don't don't uh, uh, don't don't tell these people, right, uh, until the the very last moment. <coughs> Continue choosing the baby's name. That's a big one. Choosing the name can uh, can be very emotional for a couple. Some claim that the strife in the argument uh, is rich in, uh, in decision is about child's name uh, have the detrimental effect on a child, right? So it's uh, it's very important. I, I think in most uh, cultures, I think um, uh, she picks uh, the name for the first child. I think the mother, and, uh, and then uh, the father does. Yeah. Of course, she. She can uh, she can give the this opportunity to to uh, um, to her husband, but 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 usually who who gets involved? The in law the the parents get involved. The, the the parents of the of the couple get involved, and that's uh, that's not proper. Let uh, let this couple choose whatever name they want, not whatever you want. Okay. And uh, that that's the difference between uh, Ashkenazi and Sephardic custom. So Ashkenazim. Uh, name only after like if you want like after after somebody only after deceased so don't uh, don't name uh, if somebody is still alive but Sephardim they, they can uh, name after somebody who is alive okay continue of course it, it, it must be righteous person of course continue revealing, uh, revealing the baby's name I'm not sure why would somebody do that the custom of most families is not pub publicly revealed the name of the child before it's officially given. At the breeze for a boy, uh, or even uh, the father receive, or when the father receive aliyah, uh, latara for a girl. So that's uh, that's a proper time. So sometimes a baby is born, a boy, right? A bigger boy is born, and he's yellow, right? So we we, we cannot uh, do do. do, do Brisbane line. Sometimes it delayed maybe for for a month. I don't know, one day, two day. Uh, could could be months. Could be a few months. So if uh, 
Moel, uh, uh, the, the, that's uh, circumcision says that the baby is not ready. The baby is not ready, period. So, but in your mind, you have a name and uh, so you, you must keep it a secret. So the, 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 the official uh, name given is actually when, when they do the, um, the circumcision, the special text. I think it's on, uh, in our see the results. I think it should be there. Right uh, when uh, when we give uh, uh, this boy a name, and for a girl, uh, it's it's actually also a special procedure. Only when uh, <clears throat> when uh, what when uh, when a husband is getting aliyah for the Torah, right? It does not have to be on Shabbos. It could be on uh, Monday on, on or Thursday. Doesn't matter, and um, and uh, get get the name. Right and same 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 procedure actually just, just so you know same procedure is uh, when somebody wants to add the name uh, for uh, for whatever reason or if somebody did never had a Jewish name for example right also possible the person one uh, person wants to adopt a Jewish name it could be thirty five years old for for forty five years old right uh, so that's uh, that's exactly exa exactly the same procedure is like. Uh, um, it, it's like we, we do for a newborn, we, we do for, for adult, doesn't make any difference. So if, if it's a man, so we get a Malayam to a Torah, or if, if, if it's a lady, of course she stays on the lady section. So we had this case many years ago, one uh, woman, she like, uh, she persisted that she has to get an Ali or get closer to the Bima, and all of the clowns, Say they they were like they were like I don't know hiding under the table like for three rabbis. He, they did not did not have guts to tell her that it's not proper. Then it came to my attention. I explained to her, look, it's still in the middle of the davening. So we have this mechitza. So if you want to open up mechitza a little, okay, there is no problem. But if if you want to see, but there is nothing to see. I mean, your, your husband is is there. He's like uh, he's a representative. That's it. And uh, well, she, uh, and she, she asked me. She asked me seven times why nobody like explained her like this. They gave, he, they gave her the crooked uh, explanation. They tried to avoid the issue. I mean, uh, she wanted to, to get to, to to the bima. It's in the middle of the prayer. That, that's what it is, right? We have a liyah to the Torah. We still read in the Torah. It's in the middle of the prayer. So I mean, I explained, and she was fine. And Baruch Hashem, she's very happy with the name. Baruch Hashem. So they have to be like, uh, don't don't hide the truth from people. I mean, uh, especially people who wants to follow the Torah and wants to do the right thing. Okay. And uh, after that, other people, like uh, she, she told her friends, and they uh, got the, the Jewish names and the second name, whatever. So, okay. Whatever they want. Some of, uh, some of them were single. So we, we gave them name, uh, just uh, Gabbai give, or Rabbi Gabbai. Doesn't matter. Somebody like that. Uh, read the text and it's official she gives of course uh, like some breakfast and uh, everybody eats congratulations and then that's uh, that's basically it okay continue however there is no strict prohibition to do so <clears throat> right uh, i mean okay i mean uh, to to give out the, the name but it's not proper right it, it's not so if, let's say the girl was born on uh, on um, thursday right Thursday, so it it's already too too late. It's after the prayers. Okay, so so be patient. Get, like uh, announce it on the Shabbos. That's it. I mean, it's not a big deal. Some suggest that the, for the uh, for purpose of not revealing the name is to avoid Ein Hara. Exactly, Ein Hara. Like, uh, however, the Paskim write that one may write the baby's name on a birth certificate before the name is officially given. So that's a different story. So actually the way I understand, they're not going to let you like uh, out of the hospital unless you, you give the, the official name because like uh, for, for the baby, they have to like uh, uh, put, put in their records uh, the, the name of the baby, right? Uh, they, they cannot uh, like uh, uh, give a number or something to, to the baby, right? And, Social security is not enough. It, uh, uh, at that time, uh, there is no social security. Okay, so it must be named. So you, you can give the official. There is no problem. Uh, you, I mean, you, you do not give. You, you write. You, you're not saying out loud. So that is not a problem. Any questions on what we said before I continue? <clears throat> okay. So, next one, learning uh, the baby's gender. Very interesting. At times during the pregnancy, a couple may uh, be asked 
if they wish to be informed uh, as to the gender of the uh, the uter, the child in the uter. Okay. <clears throat> For some, this is a difficult choice to make. The reason why many choose not to find out uh, is that the Gemara writes, blessing is found only in something that is hidden from the eye. Okay, so if you have some uh, uh, some things, uh, some uh, um, money that is uh, hidden away, so the, 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 don't count whatever. Because if it's uh, if it's uh, hidden, so Hashem can can increase the amount. If you count every other day, whatever you count, so you <clears throat> you lose this blessing. Okay, so same same with, the, with these people. They say let it be hidden. What 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 the difference does it make? Okay. Uh, the matter specifically refers to refidus as something that is hidden from the eye. Okay. All right. So of course, yeah, the, the refidus is a hidden from the eye. Uh, for the guidance of this issue, a um, uh, couple should uh, discuss with the rab. I mean, if it's uh, if it's not like uh, health related or something like uh, right, if it's out of curiosity only, don't do it. <clears throat> Unless I mean, uh, of if if you want, like uh, I don't know, but some some people are so curious they uh, they cannot sleep. Okay, so let them find out. But otherwise, try to keep it in hiding. <clears throat> Next one, inducing labor. Uh, there are times when uh, it may be deemed medically necessary to induce labor. The Paskim discuss this topic at length. The couple should discuss it with their rav. As well as a doctor, because um, it can sometimes uh, pose halachical hashkafic or halachic issue. So, Sigras Mashem, one should not uh, induce labor merely for the sake of convenience. So, uh, so she wants uh, the, the baby to go, to be born on, on the same uh, uh, on the same uh, day, day as her, for example, on, on the same day uh, as, as her father. Right, so they don't induce labor, or because doctor wants to go home. Okay, well, let him go home. You understand? Because uh, it says that uh, a baby is born un under specific time, under, under specific mazal, right, and under specific star, like a, a specific second, and that's uh, that was plan of, uh, of Hashem to begin with. And now a person gets involved, and out of their convenience, they uh, ruin the plan. So unless Strictly, strictly necessary, like uh, don't do it. Okay. So we finish. Any questions on that topic? Because we're going to be confirmed. Okay. Next uh, topic is not is uh, happy. So, uh, Avelus. So Avelus is uh, so some somebody is in mourning for uh, for a close one. <coughs> So the, the first uh, part is Aninus. The Mishnah st tells us that one who, uh, whose close relative dies, in this, uh, one is considered to be in a state of Aninus until the burials take place. So okay, there, there are several stages uh, uh, in a person's like, uh, status, uh, halakhic status, when, uh, uh, when, when somebody dies, like one of these... Uh, close relatives it's uh, parents children um, siblings and uh, right and wife or husband okay so the, the first stage is uh, stage uh, is an when when the, when the person died but still did not bury and it's possible when when somebody must come from another country from another city it takes time to this that okay it's it's possible especially when son like uh, uh, the the waiting for a son they just, uh, Right, even the, uh, if 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 he lives o overseas and this and that, so it may take a day or two or three. So okay, so this is the status of Aninus. Or for example, one of uh, our dear friends, his mother passed away on uh, the, during the pandemic, and they could not bury her for two weeks. Why? Because uh, all of the people uh, in this uh, funeral home were sick with Corona. That's uh, and they ran out of the. Of the uh, coffins, it's like it was terrible. So that's uh, that's uh, crazy, All right? So continue. In halacha, this is called um, being onain. So onain is like noun, right? The status of the person. 
Close relatives include father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, and, and spouse. Aninus uh, applies to both male and female relatives, even if they are located in a, at a great distance from the deceased. Okay. If the burials will not take place for at least two or more days, and uh, there is nothing that a uh, particular re relative must personally arrange for the burial, that specific rel relative is not considered an unnamed during that time. So unnamed means that uh, person cannot, uh, he, he's actually freed from all of the positive mitzvahs, if I remember correctly. Right, because uh, even uh, from, say, St. Shema, putting fill in, why? Because uh, he's preoccupied with this mitzvah to, to arrange the, the, the burial. But, uh, but today we say, since, since I mean, uh, mostly Habra Kaddisha is taking over, like funeral home is taking over, there is not much for a person to do. Okay, he has to arrange, he has to pay money, but uh, not, not like he, he has to, like, in you know, olden days, like, oversee many things. Okay, so the status of an aninus an, uh, an unless it is all prearranged. <clears throat> so continue, restriction of uh, of an anain. One who is um, presently an anain uh, is exempt from all positive mitzvahs. Exactly. Moreover, she or he, right, uh, she is not allowed to voluntarily perform mitzvah at the time. So a person cannot say, no, no, I'm going to do it anyway. No. Right, so why? This is because it is considered disrespectful to the deceased if his relatives are not preoccupied with the um, endeavors before the corpse has been laid to rest. One who attempts to fulfill obligation to recite Kriya Shema while she is unnamed has not fulfilled an obligation and must repeat it uh, after the burial. Right, so for example, uh, um, the burial is, uh, I, I don't know, let, let, let's say 3 p.m., right? Let, let's say 3 p.m., so in a, a person try, tries to pray in the morning, let's say, so saying Shema, it's, Shema is not counted. Shema Nesra is not counted, right? Only after the burial. Um, continue. And an name should, so one, one more time, no, do not perform any positive mitzvahs. And an name should not recite brachas before or after eating. So that's, uh, I mean, if, yeah, if, some, if somebody would lose somebody like, somebody like, especially son, especially, I don't know, Lola and Lola Hem, like some, somebody very, very close. Right? However, one uh, who, who eats uh, bread should wash Nitalas Yadayim without reciting Bracha al Nitalas Yadayim. So for bread, only wash, but no, no blessing. Another solution of, on uh, an name is that he or she is forbidden to um, eat meat and drink wine. Right? So meaning uh, don't, uh, don't enjoy the food. However, on the, um, on the days of Shabbos or Yom Tov, uh, there is no aninus. Okay, so <clears throat> on, um, on uh, Shabbos or Yom Tov, um, everything cancels. So for example, somebody buy, pass on a Friday. Right uh, or or even uh, I would say even even on Thursday. So on Friday there is, it's not much time unless it's, uh, you have special connection. Every, everybody is so quick and uh, uh, like um, uh, so, so so they can do it. That's that's a different story. But otherwise uh, you you would need to delay till Sunday. So if it's Sunday, so on Shabbos there is no one in us. Uh, this is because there is nothing that the relative can do uh, in preparation for the burial, right? And uh, therefore, not consider a disgrace to the deceased, uh, for, uh, deceased for the relatives to be uh, distracted, uh, distracted from the burial. Therefore, it is permitted to recite all brachas and prayers and to eat meat and drink wine. So it's only on uh, on Shabbos, but but same same goes same goes. I mean, if. Uh, a person wants, like uh, in uh, in case of my friend, right? So his mother passed away, and it was like uh, uh, she was uh, she was in uh, this funeral home in a refrigerator or something like, uh, and that's it. Like, it's it's not much uh, he could do, and only wait. So he was allowed and actually expected to say bless. I mean, of course, it, it depends on the person, on the state of mind. But uh, okay, but I I think uh, after a few days he was actually saying all of the blessings. Continue. 
tearing one's garment. The Gemara requires one to tear one's garment upon the death of the close relatives. See above. Okay, all of these seven relatives. This applies to women as well. The custom is that uh, uh, the loss of the parent, one tears all the outer garments to the exclusion of undergarments. A woman should uh, hold back uh, the tear and should pin uh, the garment so that she, um, that she would be properly covered. Okay, we're going to explain. The mourner, the mourner wears the torn garment throughout the Shiva. The mourner who changed the clothing during the Shiva must tear the second garment as well. So, so we... <clears throat> Um, there is a special procedure, right, when, when they, we, we tear the garment, and uh, as they say, what did they, how did he say it? all of the outer garments. So, of course, it's not problem. For, for men, there is no problem. But for, for women, it's, uh, it is a problem, right? The problem was my modesty. So, she has to take uh, these uh, pins, right, uh, English pins, and uh, like uh, close uh, the hole. So, it, 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 it is... It is it is visible that there, there is a like a, there is a tear, but uh, it is closed because of the modesty, of course. <laughs> okay, so and uh, of course uh, the, during these seven days uh, we, we we don't take showers and uh, right don't don't take haircuts stuff like that even for thirty days no no haircuts. So but. Um, so if a person want, wants to change and uh, wear different garments, then there is no problem. They'll let them change and wear different garments, that, but they have to cut them also. <clears throat> One should be uh, stay, um, standing while the garment is torn. However, one who is physically unable to stand may uh, remain seated. It's from Shulchan Aruch. Okay. So uh, since it is, uh, it is halacha, um, when, when, uh, when, right, when, when you do any, any mitzvah, so we, we do it while standing. Almost all of them, but, uh, some of them when, uh, when it says when, uh, when, when you need a special concentration, so, so you do sit in. So, and, um, that's why, that's why some, some do kiddush while seated. So I'm um, like literature, so they would do Kiddush Wal Sidi and Havdalah the same, right? And uh, Sephardim do well standing. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, according to Arizal, you also have to stand. Of course, when when, when you drink and uh, drink the Kiddush wine, everybody sits, or uh, like our Havdalah wine. That's, uh, every, that, that's uh, same for everybody. But uh, most of the mitzvahs we do well standing, but when you need a greater concentration, you do sitting. So that's an answer to the first question. How we do, do we do Sfiras um, HaOmer, right? So we had three questions today. So we do it while standing. So of course, a person cannot stand weak. When I was uh, sick, you can do sitting, but proper to stand. Continue, the Gemara writes, so same with uh, this toring uh, of the garment. <clears throat> the Gemara writes that uh, any person who is present when an individual passes uh, passes away must tear the garment. However, the custom is that one, uh, one no longer does so. Some suggest that this is because we do not want to discourage others being present when the person dies. Right, so uh, especially the, the question is uh, was asked, we belong in the... Uh, in the book of um, medical halacha, right? So if if you I would uh, make this uh, nurse or doctor, you know, the uh, Jewish doctor, right, to 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 to, to tear a garment uh, like every time, like, like uh, they are not going to do it. Like uh, if somebody would die, they would leave uh, the room. You understand? So of course, and uh, plus uh, one explanation: what is it was not exa exactly their garment, uh, like uh, they, they, it was not exactly their uniform. This uniform uh, belongs to the hospital, but 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 second reason is yeah, there are people like uh, I I I have to lose my garment because of this the deceased person. Okay, maybe he's a very good person, but uh, this garment cost me a lot of money. Okay, so today is no longer a practice. All of the strict halacha mandates that the mourners tear their uh, garments when they are next to the deceased. 
The prevalent custom is to wait to tear the garment until uh, just before the burial. Just before the burial. <clears throat> so uh, that's why they, they do some, many people do it in uh, the cemetery. One, um, one reason offered um, for this change is that the laws of Kriya are complex and Kriya therefore should be done in front of someone who is fluent in these laws. A rabbi is usually present at the burial and will um, ensure that ev everything is done correctly. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a special, uh, um, like separate uh, uh, book of laws for, for, for Avelos or how, how they do Kriyas, like he has to touch a woman, not touch a woman, how, how is it done, all of these things. So and you, usually a rabbi is, uh, is in charge of this burial procession, so let him do it uh, correctly. So that, that's why, I mean, initially Shulchan Aruch says, well, while you're in, in that room, right, when somebody passes away, but uh, um, <clears throat> but today we, we leave it for an expert. Okay, continue. Sildas Habra'a, after the funeral. The first meal eaten uh, by the mourners, by a mourner, after the funeral is called Silda Havra'a. The mourner may not eat uh, this meal using her own food. Instead, or his food, it must be donated to the mourner by others. A woman who is a mourner may not receive her husband's food. Since her husband is obligated to support her, the food is not considered to be donated. Similarly, a husband may not receive the meal from his wife. So that's why it's it's uh, it's proper when to to send the food to um, to to the mourner's house. So, so somebody is mourning, so we buy the food. So like that's uh, bring bring something over. So like when, when when you go to the mourner's house, we bring something over. So like many many times people bring cookies. So anyway, you come to the mourner's house, it's like full of the cookies. Like you you normal like uh, okay if. If they're going to eat all, all only the, these cookies, they're going to right, <laughs> be 200 pounds after they finish the show. Continue. Additionally, but uh, but it's it's very interesting point since a husband is uh, obligated to support his wife, so it's not considered to be donation. That's uh, his obligation. So the food, uh, these uh, meals, um, must be donated. It's from Shulchan Aruch 378 two. Okay, continue. Additionally, if a woman are the only mourners, they are not uh, receive the food from men, but should uh, given the food by 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 women. If there are male mourners al along with uh, female mourners, men are permitted to provide the food. And same, I would so because uh, as we understand, because of modesty issues. So now. He, he, the, the, this man uh, brought uh, food to this single lady, so uh, I mean something can develop from that. So we try and uh, stay away from this. And same, um, I would say, from uh, for Purim, right? So a woman has to give a uh, gift uh, to a woman, now a man has to give uh, to a man. So, but but if you give for for a family, so okay. Uh, for example, I would bring and say, yeah, this is for you and for your wife. All right, I mean it from me and my wife. To you and your wife. So my wife gives to your wife, and uh, I give to you. That's uh, that's the proper thing, right? So meaning that uh, I'm, I'm not giving to his wife. I give it to him, and uh, I'm uh, making him my messenger to give to his wife for my wife. That's uh, that's the thing. Okay. A woman may donate siuda uh, havra uh, to male mourners, even if she is not related to him. Okay, woman may donate. Uh, okay, no problem. I'm not sure what is uh, what is the explanation, but uh, it's from a Gesher Chachaim. Interesting. Okay, continue. Round foods. The custom is to give the mourners um, round foods such as bagels, rolls, or hard-boiled eggs. Right. So same same thing as uh, as we eat. Um, um, be, uh, like last last meal before nine of half, and uh, right, so we, we eat some, something around like to 
to show that the con continuation, that all uh, the, the life is going in circle. Right? Um, okay, continue. Meals on the second day. So here we, we, um, we just spoke about first day. First day, like uh, right after that, the person comes from the burial. Um, what are they going to say? It? Okay, so let, um, let, let, let's continue reading. A meals on the second day. If Morda does not wish to eat on the first day of the morning, she is not required to do so. Or I mean, he, he, she or he that does not make any difference. He has a, no, absolutely no difference between men and women. On the second day, mourners may eat their own food. So the, the, the only thing is uh, for uh, for the first day, right? Even if it is their first meal since uh, since the since the burial. Likewise, if the burial was late in the day and the mourner has not uh, eaten until uh, that, ni uh, that nightfall, the first meal be consisted of your own food. Meaning that like after nightfall, it's already next day. Right? Uh, just so we know. Uh, and um, one thing that, that, uh, that we do is actually we give our mourner like a food to into their hands. Why? Because they... Like uh, they they uh, going through such a sorrow, they they do not un understand what what's going on, right? So you give somebody food in their hand, and you say, "Please eat, please eat something like plate, whatever you you like, a piece of bread or something, and uh, let them to eat." And that's why we we don't do that. I mean, I think it's all of the cultures. I mean, uh, when I say cultures, in all of the cultures, uh, Jewish cultures, different. Uh, um, branches we don't give food especially bread into somebody's hand right so for example on shabbos you you um you cut the, the, the bread for your family for for your guests so you, you cut the bread you put it on a plate whatever on a nice plate and you pass around and let, let them have, let everybody take uh, their own whatever they want why right? because not to be like uh, like a, a bad sign like uh, the, the mornings like some somebody or if you want like you you can put uh, into to your uh, wife's like plate, put in your plate, let you, but not not into the hands. But some clowns, what they do, they they just throw the bread. That's absolutely f forbidden. Absolutely, they never allowed to throw the bread, right? Uh, so they, they try to to give it to somebody hand, but you have to treat bread very very respectfully. Continue voluntary mourning. As not that a person is obligated to mourn uh, for a parent, child, a sibling, or a spouse. However, one may voluntarily keep uh, the loss of the mourning for any individual for whom she wishes to do so. Accordingly, uh, according to Halacha, adopted children are not considered related to the men uh, and women uh, who raise them. However, if a child, uh, child or a parent wants uh, to accept upon herself the laws of mourning, she may do so. I mean, uh, it's. I would say it's uh, like even though it's not, uh, it's not uh, obligatory by halacha, but it would be very wrong if, if this uh, couple like uh, uh, adopted the child and then they they invest so much in you and now they somebody passes and you you don't see the shiva for them, even though you're not obligated. That would be very very wrong, right? Uh, of course, one more time, not obligated, and uh, and sometimes pe people uh, they they feel so close. We have had a few cases like that to to the grandparents, because for whatever reason they uh, they were they grew up uh, for whatever reason, right? In their um, uh, grandparents' uh, houses, right? I mean, they at least lived for for uh, like a certain period of time, and they, they feel so attached for grandparents. So of course, we always tell them you're not obligated, but if you want to, so but uh, but don't don't cut short. If you like, you have to decide for yourself. If you want to mourn seven days, you mourn seven days, but don't mourn three days. Like don't uh, don't invent your own version of Judaism. Okay, you want to do it, do it. Are you obligated? Absolutely not. Right. So, for example, this uh, um, a grandchildren can get married. There is no problem. But uh, like even uh, two two weeks after uh, after like uh, grand uh, grandparents died, they can get married. There is no problem. Right. Uh, children would not be allowed. If uh, if somebody j just passed away, and uh, this uh, lady would not be allowed to, to get married. 
very soon. After some time, uh, it depends, but uh, not, not right away. Okay. Continue. Converts. Converts not obligated to mourn for bi biological relatives who the relative who dies, even if that relative uh, has also converted to Judaism. However, it's proper to conduct do so for, uh, for the deceased, uh, what they uh, themselves would consider proper uh, to do for the loved ones uh, who has died. Okay. So that's... Uh, one is from uh, for Rima, and one from Igras Moshe. So one more time. Converts are not obligated to mourn for biological relative who dies, right? Because uh, as we know, somebody wants somebody converts, they get uh, a totally new neshama, the soul, and uh, that has nothing to do with uh, with the soul that it was before. And uh, it's it's actually when uh, when a person dips into mikvah, like in the time of conversion, that's uh, when soul should get into that person. Right, uh, if a person feels it, does not feel it, it, it it's a different story, right? But uh, but that's uh, actually the official uh, Hebrew birth of that person, not uh, not the original one, uh, but converted to, to like uh, to Hebrew, but but this one. So according to Rambam, so this uh, child, this person is zero years old. So his son, let's say uh, seven, uh, he he becomes zero, and he also is zero. Okay, very nice though. All right. One, one second. Uh, so and uh, let let me just just finish and I give uh, time for questions. So and uh, they say even when when a person uh, when a relatives converted to Judaism. So if uh, for example a mother a mother converts and a son converts, so the, the, they're different, like separate people, like different people. Even though they connected, uh, but uh, they're not. Basically, are they obligated to, to sit Shiva again for these uh, parents? Not obligated, not, right? According to Allah, not, but it's proper to do so. I mean, how, how does it look, right? So uh, this mother, okay, biological mother, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter. She, this person, she, she invested so much into this, this, this child, doesn't matter, Jewish, not Jewish. And now, uh, like, uh, know, after, after, let's say, they converted, they live 40 years after conversion, 50 years. Now she passes away and this guy said, no, no, I, I'm not obligated to, to say Shiva. Now I'm not going to do that. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's not proper. Even though, halakhically, he's not obligated. So continue. And we're going to open for questions. However, it is proper to conduct, uh, to conduct. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, however, it is proper conduct to do so for the deceased, what they themselves would consider proper to do so for loved ones uh, who has died. So again, ab uh, obligated not, but it's proper to. Okay, question, please. Go ahead. Somebody, somebody wants to ask a question? Please go ahead. Does the, yes, Rob, uh, does the same uh, rules apply uh, what you said about the convert to one who's in, who's in the process of converting but hasn't converted yet? Could you, I apologize, could you, could you speak a little louder to the microphone? I apologize, it's like background noise. Do the same rules apply to one who's in the conversion process? No, no, one more second. Some, somebody who is in conversion process is not a Jew. So they're not obligated to, uh, to in all of the mitzvahs, I guess. But if, if, they, if they want to, yeah, they, they, they can do that, yes. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a good question. Um, but if some if somebody would, would like in 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 a conversion process, so it, it would be only like a, the halacha would be much stricter to 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 pay respect for if, if somebody got, got forbidden their family dies, like uh, parents, for example. I mean, if they're not idol worshippers, if they don't uh, force you to go into this uh, idol worshipper. Uh, Places, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you're allowed to go, and it should. Otherwise, it looks very bad on Judaism. Okay. Continue. Relatives who are not mourning. There is a custom for an individual who is uh, related to the one sitting Shiva. For example, a girl whose father is mourning the loss of his father to accept mourning practices upon herself. Okay, so her grandfather died. On the father's side, so what practices? Let's see. So the, we're talking about grand uh, grandchildren. 
this is not as strict uh, as, um, as how full mourners conduct themselves. The custom is to limit the bathing and attending simcha. Um, so here we're talking about only seven days, I guess. Additionally, this voluntary mourning is a practice only uh, until Shabbos of the first seven days. Okay, okay, after the burial. Okay, okay, so, so we're talking about, uh, as, as we said before, uh, grandchildren not obligated. But if they want to, uh, so they can uh, um, accept limited mourning. So it was a limited mourning. Do not uh, go to the Simcha. So all of this, uh, uh, I don't know, weddings or, or something. I mean, but I'm, I'm not sure if normal grandchild, like if, if uh, my grand, uh, grandmother died, I'm, I'm going to go on a wedding like tomorrow. Of course I'm not going to go, right? So it's, uh, first of all, I, I think like, in, like even logically, disrespect to, to the deceased, right? Okay, but uh, they say even more linear, not, I said seven days, but they, they, they go even more linear opinion until the Shabbos. So if it, uh, the, the burial was on uh, Thursday, so okay, guess what? It's only one day. Uh, additionally, this uh, voluntary morning is practiced only until the Shabbos of the first seven days uh, after burial. Whether it, begin, uh, where, um, whether it be, uh, begins at the beginning or the end of the week. Okay. Likewise, uh, if the grandchild of the deceased feel the need to take shower, she may do so. Again, okay, so this voluntarily think, uh, I, I mean, uh, whatever you want to do. Okay, one second, let me check time. Uh, I think we can stop here. And uh, there are a few questions that... Uh, uh, that, that is on the chat. So the, the first question is very interesting. So it it might be like uh, for people who do not, or very surprising that this cloth uh, needs a kosher stamp, right? And we say yeah, cloth clothing uh, need a kosher stamp. Meaning what? There is um, biblical uh, restriction. We're not allowed uh, to wear clothing when um, wool and linen together. Right, so when, when every time when, when you buy a, a, a woolen thing, like a, like a garment, you, you have to go to the special lab and, and check. Right, and they, uh, I, th I think we, we discussed it, like uh, they would uh, take, especially men's jacket, like if it's wool, they're going to check like here in this place and in, in the shoulders and same uh, with, with the women's jackets, right, uh, and um, they, they check the, the threads, because sometimes, some sometimes the, these threads are also from uh, uh, from linen, but I mean it's very very rare, but but, but it's possible. So in in a lab that uh, that we go, uh, they have like a big, 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 huge display, and all, all of these th things like un, un, unexpected things that they uh, found uh, found what is it um, sharpness. Uh, so they, they, the mix of uh, wool uh, and linen together is called sharpness. So if you know that somebody, somebody it's 100 synthetic, like uh, there is no, uh, not not necessary to check. But um, uh, but uh, advice so to everybody on on um, on um, our main main channel on the ma main website, bizratashen.org, we have uh, actually if you search for a document, I think it's PDF format. Uh, if you check for um, sharpness, right, the double A sh sharpness, uh, and uh, and uh, we list all of those uh, things that uh, um, what you obligated to, to check. Okay, so I mean, if 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 you don't buy wool garments, then you're not obligated. If you buy, for for example, if you buy cotton garment, okay, you're not obli obligated to check. But but especially when you buy a coat, it sounds like woolen. Like a uh, wool coat, for sure you have to check, for sure. But uh, of course, they, they, they can tell you some brands, uh, they, they, they don't have sharpness, but some uh, questionable. But uh, again, uh, the, the market changes. The, yeah, uh, last year, they did not have, uh, like for the past five years, they did not. Now now they, they changed the, the supplier. So you you cannot actually rely what was uh, five years ago, in, even one year ago. Okay, so you have to check. Okay, and uh, is it clear? Any any question on, uh, on sharpness? 
Okay, somebody left. Okay, no problem. So, a next question uh, was about uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, a Pesach and Shavuos uh, as a holiday? So, uh, uh, non Jews uh, can, can go to, to, to Jews. So, I mean, uh, the, there's no difference. Uh, there are three main holidays Pesach, Shavuos, and Sokas. So, the, just, uh, just uh, to. <laughs> To understand, the, the only restriction is for a Jew not to cook for, for a Jew on a, uh, on a holiday. That's, uh, that's the only difference. I mean, uh, that, 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 that's the only restriction. That's the only restriction. And they say even before the holiday. Even before the holiday, because why, guess what, since you're allowed to cook on holiday, maybe you forgot that these uh, people are coming and you start cooking on holiday. That's why it's like uh, um, not allowed. Right, so for people who do not come, just don't go for meals. But you can go for all of the prayers. So I mean, make yourself a meal in a house and enjoy and uh, try try to be happy. As Rabbi Ruben Shlita always say, if you if you can convert it for other Jews to to accept you to like you, so don't convert. So you have to convert for for Hashem. So just be happy with uh, whatever he said. It's allowed. I'm going to do it. And do I like it? I'm going to do. I don't like it. Guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. Right? Don't don't try like people try to to be likable. I in a shul that I go, like uh, this uh, this one person sees that, that uh, I mean people move in a way, people people die, and one like official, he's trying so hard to come like uh, between the Torah readings and come and talk to the people. Good Shabbos, good this, good that. It's like so it's so so disgusting. Like so they just stop it. Do you work too hard for that? Understand? Do do it before prayers. Do do it after the prayers. I mean, uh, even though like it, it's not allowed to speak uh, at that time, but it's uh, less restrictive as uh, other times. Understand? Don't don't try to be liked by other people, especially like uh, um, when you like um, break the laws. Okay. And, and of course, Hashem is going to bless you. Of course. All right. Uh, any other questions on any topic? Anyone? <clears throat> okay, so if oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I see. It. Yeah, go ahead. Uh but we we cannot hear you, Israel. If you now now you put your solo on mute. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. question what, what, what happened like you you have hot because, water on uh, Shabbos are we talking about Shabbos or a different day uh, no no uh, every day because uh, for Netilatia time the water must be covered what about uh, a cup of tea if we we leave that un unattended okay there is a, and, and then and then you want to uh, wash your hands with that water with the tea Overnight. Uh, drinks uncovered. No, no, because, but no, 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 no. The, the halacha is overnight, overnight. So some people, I, I understand what, what, what you said. So, okay, so we're not, uh, halacha is, do not leave um, uh, the, the, the drinks overnight. Why? And uh, Gemara says, because a snake might come and drink from your uh, drink, right? Or in, uh, like, uh, inject some, some poison. Into it, then uh, the person is going to die. So they say, especially snake uh, were coming in that uh, that time, and uh, <laughs> houses uh, had uh, big holes like ev everywhere. So the, the snakes would just come in, come out. So and it was dangerous. So uh, But uh, during the day, some people adopted the stringency, but it's not it's not halacha. So you're not. Uh, so if you left your tea and uh, uh, uncovered, and you went outside. 
you went to to I don't know to, to, to the store you come back two hours later you you can drink this tea there is no problem so the, I but it is true some people um, adapt this leniency but uh, it's not nice uh, the, the, the stringency stringency we, we don't do it you can drink this tea. is already on, on the horizon the counting of the omer is made without blessing if i am not mistaken yes correct yes okay uh, yeah so uh, uh so how many hours do we have since the year or the the time of, of the night when the new day changes okay okay okay, okay that, that, that's a good question so the uh, let me just uh, restate your question. So the, the question is, uh, what what is the proper time to to count Omer? So after after the nightfall, of course there is a leniency. Some say like after. Sometimes I I'm, I'm not sure like um, um, after the sundown, but I think like fifteen minutes. I don't, I don't exactly remember. I, I don't uh, rely on this leniency, but some people do. But even if they do, it's proper to for them to recount again. But proper, proper time, like according to all of the opinions, after the nightfall, uh, you you count uh, you, like after like you um, you can count the the Omer and until until the the daybreak until the daybreak. So if, like basically you have the whole night. So if you did not do it uh, during the whole night, right uh, for whatever reason. Person was sick, or whatever, fall asleep, whatever happened, right? Uh, so during the day, just count without the blessing, and then uh, next uh, night, like uh, coming coming night, you you would be able uh, to count with the blessing. But if person missed complete day, complete, complete, he he did not count at night during the night and during the day, and then like remember, like after only after uh, it was too late after nightfall next day, so you're not allowed to count with the blessing until the end of the um, count, right? So you just continue counting, that's it, without the blessing. That's uh, that's the only difference, but but still, ob obligation is still there, okay? Um, I think the last question is, uh, I know, it's, uh, it's related to this, uh, if, must it be recited facing Yerushalayim? It's not, it's not, it's not necessary, but since, since it is prayer, like all of the prayers, so you can, yeah. I would say it's proper to recite, to to face Rishalim, but it's not strictly necessary because it, it's it's not a prayer. It's a special. It's a separate mitzvah. So, if, for example, if some you you somewhere outside and you you don't know where, where Rishalim is, so you just recite it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions on any topic? Okay. No problem. So, no question. So, please uh, join our WhatsApp group. Baruch Hashem, we're going live. We're going strong. We send uh, several posts every day. Baruch Hashem, we uh, have an amazing team who help us a lot. It's all beautiful. Uh, it's a lot of work. Just, just so you know, it's a lot of work. A lot. A lot. So, it's not one, one person. It's several people who work uh, tirelessly. Baruch Hashem, may Hashem bless them and uh, they and their families. And uh, please join us. It's a lot of information. Some from the classes that uh, recent classes, some from previous classes. We have a class on character development, Kilchos Dios. We have a um, class on blessings that is going on now. We start like, I'm not sure how many lectures we posted. It's on YouTube, maybe two or three. But all, all of the questions that were asked uh, in these uh, classes, it's actually from that class. So answer all answers are there. But of course, I it's it's easy to ask and uh, give uh, and get uh, like a custom answer. But uh, there, of course, we go into into details of all of the possible like uh, scenarios. Of course, okay. So please join us. All right. If no other questions, so good night until tomorrow. We're going to continue with. Uh... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Question. No. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Go ahead. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's um, uh, it's 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 in a category of dangerous food. 
uh, like uh, is, is, is it for sure do, do you have snake in, in your house most likely not you understand if if uh, even if a fly I mean if fly is going to drink from from your uh, cup of water so you you're going to to see right um, for example that, that that's what happened to us we have uh, in my house where we had some wine like uh, like on like on, on, on the bottom of, of the cup on my my, my kiddish cup and we forgot to, to wash it and guess what well, we found the fly in that decided to drink my wine yeah okay no problem okay any other questions no problem so okay so tomorrow we're going to continue with our uh, class uh kitsu shohan thank you very much join us tomorrow thank you